As always, welcome in my math party people. Anderson here, your math coach, and I got a good one for you here. So in this video, there's gonna be two parts to this because we're gonna start the conversation of factoring polynomials. So in this video, I'm gonna show you first, well, what does factoring mean when it comes to variables? And then from there, get some practice in. And in the next video, because this one and the next one are attached, in the next one, I'm gonna show you basically how to do more complicated examples of this, okay? So let's go ahead and get started here and let's understand how to factor. And then later on, I'll show you even more complicated examples that you'll probably see on your test. So here we go. We're gonna find, we're gonna factor the common factor out of each expression here. And here's what we got. We have 27x squared minus 21x. So if there's something that you really need to know, it's this, it is this. Factoring is the opposite of distributing, okay? Factoring is the opposite of distributing, of distributing, okay? For all intents and purposes here, distributing, that's what this means right here for this level of math, all right? So factoring is the opposite of distributing. So what does that mean? Well, what that means is this. You know how when you, when you distribute, you're really multiplying, right? Everything on the outside of the parentheses multiply with everything inside, right? Might sound familiar. So here what we're looking at is, well, what's the opposite? What can we divide out of both of those terms? What can we take out from both of those terms? And here's how it works. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start off by writing out my 27 x squared minus 21 x. Just gonna start off by writing both of those out. Now, here's the question I'm gonna ask myself. Cause I noticed that I have regular numbers. I also noticed that I have variables. Basically what you're asking and you know, common factor, greatest common factor might seem familiar to you because what we're gonna ask ourselves is this, what number could be divided out of both terms? What variables can be divided out of both terms? And so here's what we get. Notice that 27 and 21, they are both divisible by three, right? Right, so I'm gonna go ahead and divide a three out. I'm gonna take it out, okay? I'm gonna take it out. So here's how this works. If I take a three away from 27, if I divide it out, I'm gonna be left with nine. And if I take a three and divide it out of 21, I'm left with seven. Correct? Correct. Because think about it like this. Think about it like this. Take it nice and slow here. If I were to go forward and distribute, notice that three times nine, that gives you the 27 right here. Three times negative seven, that gives you the negative 21. So notice all we're doing here is going backwards from distributing. That's really it. And now take a look at the variables. We have x squared and x. Hmm. Well, how many X's do they share? How many X's do they have in common? Just one, just one. Take a look, I'm gonna go ahead and write it right over here. Just one. Because if I divide one of the X's out of X squared, I'm left with X. If I take uh, divide the X out of that X, well, that's just nothing, that's just gonna be seven. Stays the same. So boom, there's our final answer. But let me show you why that makes sense by going forward. I got you, my party people, I got you. Let me rewrite this over here. 3x, then we have 9x minus seven. Let me show you something magical here. Remember that with distribution, as you should have seen in the previous video, notice how we have the 3x times the 9x, three times nine is 27, x times x is x squared. Then we have 3x times the negative seven. Negative times a positive is a negative, three times seven is 21, and then you bring the x back. Look at that, right there, right there. It's the original problem. It's the original problem. Like I told you, working forward and backward is the same thing here, my party people. So with that, that's what factoring really looks like. Instead of saying, hey, multiply everything from the outside to the inside, ask yourself, what could be divided out of both of those terms or all of those terms? And you do that and you're good. So with that seven math party people, let's go ahead and go through a few more examples where the answer to this first one is going to be right over here, C. Let's take care of the second one, third one, and we'll go through quite a few examples here in this video. Then in the next video following up, 
I'm gonna show you increasingly more complex examples, and then I'm gonna let you go loose if you're in the course or program to go ahead and tackle all of that stuff in there in terms of the worksheets, speed drills, and anything else that's there for you. So here we go, number two. So I'm gonna write this out again, so we have six K to the power of four minus six K cubed. So here's what we do with Math Party people. What we've got going on is, well, ask yourself, what can I divide out in terms of just the numbers? Then we work with the variables. Do one thing at a time. Don't, don't freak yourself out. One thing at a time. If I looked at this, just the numbers, the six and the negative six, what could I factor out? What do they share? Six. You can divide a six out of either of those sixes. So I'm gonna go ahead and factor out a six. Remember my math party people, acing the ASVAB is not just about watching me do it. It's better that you practice as well. It's about watching, practicing, and mastering the material. And the best way to do that is to start off with my free practice test because it comes with video solutions so you can try it out yourself, see all the mistakes that you've made, and then keep raising your score with those video solutions, organizing yourself so you can lower that test anxiety and raise your score. No excuses, it's completely free. So go ahead and click the link there or in the description. That way you can get started, raise your score, and do everything you need to do. Let's ace the ASVAB, but let's get back to the problem after you're done signing up. Because if I do a six divided by six, that's gonna be one. And then over here, let me just put the minus there. If I do a six divided by six, that's also gonna be one. Okay, sounds good. Now let's go and take care of the variables now. Let's look at the variables, the k to the power of four and k to the power of three. Well, how many k's do they share? They share three k's. So I can take three k's out of each of them. So k cubed can come out. And so here we have four of those k's. If I take away three of them, we just have one of them left. Three k's, if I take all three of them out, well, that's it. So with that said, there's your answer. It's gonna be six k cubed, parentheses, one k minus one. Or the other way to read it, is simply 6k cubed, k minus 1, just like that. And there is your answer. Again, factoring is the opposite of distributing. What can you divide out of all the terms? What can you divide out? And so there it is. That's answer choice A. Now allow me to do another example to really help you get the ropes of this. Number three, we have 15n minus 5. So let's rewrite it here. I got your back on math party, people. 15n minus 5. So what I'll do here is I'll go ahead and write a parentheses because I'm going to go ahead and see what I can factor out. And I'm going to start with the numbers. Between 15 and 5, what can I take out? What can I divide out? Well, 5. 5 can go ahead and uh, multiply to 15, and 5 can multiply to 5 because that's 5 times 1. So cool. I'll start there. I'll go ahead and take out 5. 15 divided by 5 is 3. Let's not forget that sign right there, that minus. And 5 divided by 5 is 1. Okay, now let's worry about the variables, the n. Well, notice how there's no n over here. So you actually can't take out the n because you have to have that variable shared at least. And it's not happening. So there's your answer. You can only pull out a 5 from here. They don't have any common variables, but they do have common numbers here, common factors in terms of the numbers. So that's going to be 5, 3n minus 1, and we are good. 5 times 3n minus 1, and that's A. So I'm going to take care of another couple of examples for you, my math party people. I really want you to get used to this. I really want you to build that confidence and comfortability. So allow me to skip on over here to number 26 and show you, like, let's say we have three terms here. It's not going to be that terrible. It really is not going to be that terrible, my math party people. What we're doing here is looking at the greatest common factor from all the terms. Now, if you're asking me to factor it as, you know, a binomial times a binomial, that's coming up in a few videos. But here, we're just trying to factor out the greatest common factor. So, watch this, my math party people. 8n to the power of 4 minus 6n minus 18. This is actually going to be fairly straightforward when it comes to having a trinomial because when you look at this, well, guess what? They don't share all variables. We have n here, n here, but there is no n there. So if you ask yourself, can I pull out an n? No, you can't. No n will come out of here. Can you pull out any numbers? Well, you have 8, 6, and 18. Those are all even numbers, so you can actually divide every single one of those by 2. You can. 
And so I'll go ahead and write my parentheses. I'll factor out a two. And so eight divided by two is four, n to the power of four. Six divided by two is three, so minus three n. And then 18 divided by two is nine. So that'll be minus nine, right there. And so there's your answer, my math partner people. You couldn't factor out any variables. You can only factor out regular old numbers because they're all divisible by two. You can pull the two out and boom, there you go, making our answer A. So I hope this makes sense, my math partner people. And you can always make sure, you can always try things out in terms of, hey, let's go ahead and distribute to check our work. We can absolutely do that. 2 times 4 n to the 4th is 8 n to the 4th. 2 times negative 3 n is negative 6 n. 2 times negative 9, negative 18. Right back to the very beginning, and you're good. Let's keep going through a couple of others, my party people. Here we go. Number 27, let's try this one out here. This might look crazy, but it's still going to be just as doable. So look, write it all out first. Negative 25 n to the power of 6 minus 15 n to the power of 4 minus 50n. So the first thing that we'll do here is we'll go ahead and start off by looking at the numbers. So let's put a big old parenthesis here. And what I'm going to do here, my math part of people, is notice each of these starts off with a negative. So what can I do? I can actually factor out a negative if I want to. I can factor out a negative one if I'd like to. So let's factor out that negative. Because if I do that, then they all become positive inside. Again, Take that negative divided by negative, becomes positive. Positive, positive after I take out that negative. And really quick, before we continue my math party people, I know you're enjoying this, and you can have thousands of problems just like this in our program. In our program, you have four main things to help you succeed and more. But mainly, in our course, you're gonna get access to recorded lessons, you're gonna get access to guided practice just like this, worksheets that you can print out and try or keep them online, and lastly, speed drills to raise your confidence. That way when you take the test, there's no test anxiety. There's no pressure because you've been timed before, you know what to do, and that's the feeling that we want. And all of that's included in our program and more. So take a brief moment, click the link here in this video or in the description to learn about the program and then reach out to us if you have any questions. Sign up now, let's get going, and let's get back to the problem. Next up, the numbers, 25, 15, and 50. What do they all share? Well, 25 is five times five, 15 is five times three, and 50 is five times 10. They all share a five. So I'm more than happy to take out a five, divide out a five from each of these. Because once I divide out the five, well, 25 divided by five is five. This is gonna be plus, because again, all of these got changed once I factored out the negative. 15 divided by five is three. And then that's a plus for the 50. 50 divided by 5 is 10. Now let's go ahead and take care of the variables. Well, I see here n to the power of 6, n to the power of 4, and just n. How many n's do they all share? Just one. The first one has 6, the second one has 4, the last one has 1. That means that they all have at least one in common. They have one in common only. So I'm going to pull out just one n and then leave the rest where they were. So here, n to the power of six, take an n out is n to the power of five. n to the power of four, take away one of those n's is n to the power of three. And then lastly, 50 n, take away the n is just 10. Boom, done, that's it, we're good. And there it is. So our final answer can be written as negative five n multiplied by five n to the power of five plus three n cubed plus 10, and booyah, we're all good. Our final answer here is right over here. Right there. Booyah. And we're good. So I'll do one more for us, my math party people, one more here, and then we're going to move forward into the next video where we're going to be looking at more complicated examples with multiple variables, with more negatives. That way you can really, really get used to this. Okay? So let's go ahead and take care of... Well, let's take care of this one right here, number 28. Let's go. So here's what I'll do. I'll repeat it here. Okay, so I'm going to put a parenthesis up because I'm going to show you exactly what I'm taking out from each term. 
Should I take out a negative from everything? Nah, not necessary. Your first term is positive, so you want to leave it positive. That's fine. Then the numbers, 20, 12, and 20. What do they share? Well, you need to be quick with this because 20 is 4 times 5, 12 is 4 times 3, and 20 is 4 times 5. So you can pull out a 4 from each of those. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight each of these, and I'm going to pull out the 4. And before we continue, my math party people, really quick before we continue, I know that you're enjoying this video, and I want to make sure that more people can enjoy these videos just like you. So if you wouldn't mind, just take a quick second, like this video, comment on it, just showing some appreciation, showing what you learned, and then make sure you're subscribed to the channel so that way when we come out with new videos, typically every day, you can be right there on the spot to catch on to them. So help us help others ace the ASVAB. I'm Anderson. Let's keep going here. What's left? Well, 20 divided by 4 is 5. Then I'm going to keep that negative there. 12 divided by 4 is 3. Keep that plus there. 20 divided by 4 is 5. Now let's go ahead and worry about those variables. We don't have a variable here. We have x cubed and we have x squared. They don't share any x's. Yeah, these two do, but you need all three for it to be the greatest common factor of all three terms. So with that, you leave the x cubed where they are. Nothing changes. Leave that x squared where it is. And there it is. There's your answer. 4 multiplied by 5 minus 3x cubed plus 5x squared. And there's your answer. And that, my friend, will be right over here. That is C. That is C. And you are set. And so my math party people, hopefully you enjoyed this introduction. In the next video, I'm going to go going over some more complicated examples. That way you can really get a feel for this, tackle this the right way, and then continue on to the worksheets and speed drills to really get things cracking. Again, I'm Anderson. I'm your coach here. Let's keep moving forward and let's keep having a good time. My party people, as always, thanks for watching. Please make sure you're subscribed to the channel. That way you can see all the updates that we come out with so you can keep improving. So don't wait, subscribe now. And then while you wait for the next video, look here or there to see a related video that's gonna help you improve even more. Let's keep raising that score and let's get the job we want. I'll see you soon.